the way cashiers actually do make change today is the cash register spits out the number that says give back this much, much money. What's more important is that that child actually demonstrated that they understood the numbers. Who needs math? Who needs math when you've got computers? That's Ontario Minister of Education Liz Sandals explaining why cashiers don't need math. It'll just tell them what to do. Today is a day of standardized testing in the country's biggest province. And critics say these tests prove the province is moving away from the fundamental basics. Richard Claxbrun joins us now from Toronto. Richard, regular blogger on education issues, a parent who's, who's dealt with some of these. I want to start, Richard, with what I say is pure indoctrination. It's an example from the uh, one of the sample tests. Uh, and this is taken from the Red Star, the Toronto Red Star, and reprinted. And it's a story that tells about, well, since starting their road trip in British Columbia on October 1st, 2008, Chloe Whitaker and Tyson Jerry have stopped at many fast food restaurants, but the pair aren't breaking for snacks. They're refueling their van. Under the name Driven to Sustain, the two young environmentalists are driving across each province, territory, and state in Canada and the U.S. down into Mexico in a van powered by vegetable oil. Richard, if I showed you that, what would you think it was? Because... These are the questions that, uh, that come after it. It, it. This is about sentence structure. This is about reading comprehension, but they're given pure indoctrination. Yeah, it's uh, pretty silly stuff. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and I'm glad that you and others at Sun News are reporting on this, because a couple of years ago, when we first started talking about this, and I met, brought up the concept of social justice math, people thought it was crazy that I was making it up. And I had to actually show the examples. Uh, the, now it's becoming more, people are becoming more aware of it, and we're seeing more of it. That's not math. You, I mean, that, that is, in, you're right, it's indoctrination. It's spending a lot of time getting kids to understand a concept that doesn't really have anything to do with mathematics. It has to do with looking at the world in a particular way. Uh, and, and now it's, it's spread into English. I mean, there's several sure. examples in the sample test that is, are pure indoctrination. It's a political viewpoint, all put forward, and then, mm, well, you know, let's answer a question that doesn't relate to what you've just read. We'll just use this to filter it into your brain. Sure, and we're seeing, as a result of this, of course, we're seeing declining math scores. We're seeing uh, less literate kids in going into university. There was a report that came out not so long ago that showed that about a third of uh, undergrads in universities uh, aren't, are illiterate. They're functionally illiterate and enumerate. And that's a result of poor education in the public school system that is the direct result of reaping the harvest of critical pedagogy and of uh, you know, this discovery math stuff that is being promoted by uh, you know, what I think is the epicenter of just awfulness in education in Canada, the Mordor of education, uh, the Ontario Institute for Public Education. Uh, the, for Ontario Institute for Studies, studies in Education. In education Sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's, they're pushing essentially Marxist ideology wrapped up in critical pedagogy and it is, it's incredibly biased. It's trying to get kids to think a particular way rather than to provide them with education and facts. In fact, facts, as far as they're concerned, are really irrelevant to what to education, they, they discourage facts. They discourage people to you know, discuss uh, their feelings with each other. This is not what education is. It's about a particular indoctrination. Well, I, uh, I'm still a fan, I believe, of standardized education, but mm. these groups that you mentioned, Oise and these others, that believe in critical pedagogy, Marxist theory in education, they hated standardized testing at the beginning. Mm. Then they found a way to work their propaganda, their viewpoints, into the school system. Let's give an example. I think this is from the grade through. It's about yoga, okay? Uh, we'll come back to the, uh, the gym mat one in a moment. This is the gym mat. If we can flip to the next one. This is from uh, grade three, and it, it's from David Suzuki's EcoFun, and it's about different body postures you can do that replicate a, an animal. And so they're essentially teaching you how to do yoga. It says, explain whether or not it would be difficult to do the kneeling camel without the picture. Use details from the text and your own ideas to support your answers. Why are you, you know, here kids, do yoga. Remember David Suzuki's great, now write about it. What does that have to do with reading, writing comprehension? 
Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with it. I make, when you see stuff like this, it makes you think that eventually somebody at uh, the education aristocracy saw Star Trek II Wrath of Khan a while ago and saw that you know, the Kobayashi Maru test, where if you can't pass the test, you cheat by changing the test. And that's what they're doing. They're changing the test so that the type of education that they want to convey to children, which is not education, it's indoctrination, is what passes them. But eventually it's going to backfire. You see the stuff with Liz Sandals talking about, that you, the clip you showed earlier, where she talks about how, uh, you know, uh, the basic math skills aren't necessary because the, the cash registers will do the calculations for them. That's great if you want to produce a type of education that, where the result of it is you're getting uh, a generation of kids who are students who can only do jobs where they have ca they're on cash registers and that does the calculation for them, which means you're producing a generation of baristas at Starbucks and equity uh, studies professors at OISE, <laughs> okay. both of which are useless to society. Well, actually, the Starbucks baristas are, I take that back, they're useful. All right, let, let, let's get to this quickly. We've got 30 seconds left. I at least yeah. want to show it. We're talking about how the, the math, you can't do basic change. You and I have both talked about how they don't teach fundamentals, but when they get to a math question, it's all about how to flip a gym mat around. And even this is convoluted because they show you the gym mat down in the bottom corner of a, a, a graph, and then it's rotate the gym mat 90 degrees clockwise, about point C. This is grade six. Uh, translate the gym mat eight units up to the right. They're not teaching basics, but they're teaching convoluted math. And this is what kids are doing across the province today. Richard, sure. it scares me which is sometimes why it scares me to read your blog. But I do anyway. Well, I'm glad you do. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Thanks so much.